So Belleville Park is one of the largest urban parks in the country. It's 1,600 acres in total. And so if you compare that to some reference points like Central Park, you'll see it's about a third bigger than Central Park. Based on surveys that have been done, over 10 million people visit the park on an annual basis. Today, Belleville Park has more than 84 different cultural organizations in the park. The most familiar to most people is the San Diego Zoo. We also have an air and space museum, an automotive museum, a sports museum, um, four or five art museums. Museums want to provide access to that content to their visitors, not, not just online when they're at home, but kind of in the context of, a, of an object being on the wall in a gallery. Our foundation decided that the technology was a major area where there could be combined services that would really benefit the whole much more than they could afford to fund on an individual basis because they, just like everybody else, have limited resources and even more limited resources with the financial challenges that we're in. We've created a calendar system that kind of goes into each museum website and then aggregates the content up to the central site. And then from that site we pull feeds of calendar content out to mobile applications, to kiosks that are out in the park, um, to signage systems so we can kind of really leverage hey, what's going on right here, right now in the park? And the content is coming from the original content entry that the museums did back on their own website. In these museums, visual concerns around, you know, having a bunch of access points on the ceiling are really important to curators and, and directors. We want it to be behind a wall, which we all know kind of affects the quality of what you're doing. But when you have equipment that, you know, counts for that, all of a sudden you're kind of in a different boat. You're like, well, I can, I can be a little less than ideal on my installation because I have equipment that's going to account for that and make up for it. And then on top of that, you know, in kind of doing our testing, like I said, we, we saw, you know, the actuality and the stuff going kind of really pushing strong signals. We also saw the simplicity of kind of using the back end interface, which was, you know, really easy to use. So we've taken that platform looked at all of the public spaces and all organizations that we want to kind of, that we support, and have rolled out public Wi-Fi in those spaces. And so we have both inside coverage at most of the museums, but also outside coverage that covers the public areas of the park. Before we installed the ruckus gear, we had a pilot project that we had rolled out using um, a limited amount of the ProCurve systems. In order to kind of manage that whole thing with a limit, the limited amount of resources that not only the institutions have, but that we have, having a centralized network that can handle an extreme high quantity of content um, was really important to us. You know, what we saw with the HP is kind of limitations on how far we could go with what we had in the ProCurve line. We had discussions with Qualcomm about which organizations, which producers, they thought were kind of on the leading edge and of course Ruckus was actually the one that they said probably has the best equipment kind of for what we're looking to do. When we started doing our research, I mean we heard it from a lot of people. You know, people were saying that this equipment is kind of some of the best in, especially in difficult environments where you, you know, you want to kind of have a limited number of access points. And the Ruckus gear, as we tested it out, was just so much better. I mean it was just, it wouldn't even you know, kind of in the, in this, to a large degree in the same class. So the Wi-Fi is really, in some cases, the only thing that people have as far as connecting online. So mobile is probably the number one challenge for not only museums in Balboa Park, but for organizations that service, the, you know, the public across the country. We have a number of initiatives that are kind of developing on the mobile platform. We have an iPhone app, we have an Android app, We've deployed iPad apps and we are deploying a number of new apps. One of the key drivers was that we wanted to have a single SSID that people connect to and then wherever they go in the park, their application, especially if they say, I want, I want push notifications, can actually be adding value to their visit um, as they walk around without them having to do anything. When we went to deploy this stuff, it was very simple for us. It was a very rapid deployment and we were actually providing some of the Wi-Fi you know within 20 days. So outdoors we have uh, 10 of the 7762s but then on top of that we have the 7762s 
which are, are one of the most amazing pieces of equipment that I've had the opportunity to work with in the Wi-Fi space. I mean, there's just amazing coverage. You're out 300 meters and you're still getting a, a 70 dB signal and you're just like, wow, that's amazing. And we've seen really great reliability. We have had no problems um, to speak of. That's been one of the best things that's come out of the, the Ruckus deployment was that, you know, this stuff is easily allowing us without a huge amount of resources on the back end kind of to meet those requirements. One of the things that's really exciting about having the Ruckus network and the ability for HAP to have multiple SSIDs assigned to it is that we could go out to a wholesaler like AT&T and add them as one of the SSIDs and give them, you know, kind of a, a, a very nice integrated system on a very robust backbone um, that would enhance the experience for people using who are familiar with using the AT&T network when they're in the park and actually trying to use either other applications as well as the applications that BPOC has produced. There is, you know, probably no limit to the amount of very interesting things that can be done with mobile technology. We don't, I mean, five years ago, there wasn't an iPhone. So, you know, these have been heady times for engineers to kind of focus on what's the next phase of mobile. And without Wi-Fi, a lot of that is not gonna happen.